So our very final version of membrane transport is endocytosis into the cell. So if you have large objects that need into the cell, but <clears throat> you can't make a hole in the membrane, or you'd ruin the structural integrity of the cell, endocytosis is the answer. Let's take a closer look. The reason we need endocytosis is basically the same as the reason for exocytosis. That if you were to make a big hole in the membrane, then everything else could come in. Back to the house analogy with this one. So if you have a big object that you want to get into your house, for example, your car. I mean, how do you get a car in a house? Hey, yeah, that reminds me. One time, my uncle, he, he like drove his car into our living room. Really? Okay, good then. Moving on. So if you wanted to get a car into the house, well, you need a garage with a garage door. That works. Kind of in a similar way, we just need a different system for bringing things into the cell than those normal channels or carrier proteins. There are three versions of endocytosis, but the fundamentals are the same for all of them. So I want to go through that kind of step by step here. So let's assume that this is the inside of the cell, this is the outside of the cell. We're bringing these large objects in. And so first we deform the membrane, right? It's a fluid membrane. And so it can move and just divots in. How does it do that? Glad you asked. Part of the cytoskeleton. So there are proteins associated with the membrane and the cytoskeleton pull on the membrane. This takes energy and cause a change in shape. So that's gonna be the case all throughout. So let's just kind of follow this process through, watching how this divots and leaves no gaps, not even for a second, in the membrane. So here the membrane is dented in a little bit further. These objects have come in. This is a little bit like denting the outside of a balloon, right? That can flex in, but unlike the balloon, this is gonna pinch off into a vesicle. Let's follow with the next step. Getting closer, got a nice pit formed here, and these are gonna start closing the gap. Almost there, and there we go. This is completely free of the membrane. Membrane is still intact. Now we have these objects in a vesicle, and they can be moved around inside the cell. Very often, another vesicle full of digestive enzymes, called a lysosome, will merge with this one and digest whatever's inside, freeing up those biomolecules to be used by the cell. Three basic types of endocytosis. Let's just take them one at a time. Phagocytosis. Phage or phago means to eat. And so this is cellular eating. This is something that amoeba can do, that single cell protist. And our white blood cells actually look a lot like amoeba and they do this as well. So instead of a pit being formed, these actually reach out their cell membranes and extend and envelop or surround um, either bacteria, viruses, cellular debris, the stuff left over after cells have died or you get a wound, um, and then brings it into the cell. So those are some examples. Let's take a look at what that uh, looks like on a slide. So here's phagocytosis. We can see the cell membrane extending out, being pushed by the cytoskeleton until it surrounds whatever object it's after. And although it shows this kind of coming in, these are actually reaching out until it surrounds it and it forms a vesicle which comes into the cell. And so very often after phagocytosis, whatever comes into the cell may be harmful or is food in the case of the amoeba and so it will be merged with another digestive lysosome to break up that material. The next one is pinocytosis. Now pinocytosis, pino means to drink. This is cellular drinking and it looks just like the one I illustrated over here. There's a pit that forms but it's not very specific. Whatever fluid and solutes are outside the cell just get slurped right on in. Let's take a look at that one. 
So here's penocytosis. The membrane starts flat across, divots in more and more and more until it eventually forms a vesicle that pinches off. And it just brings in whatever happens to be right outside the cell membrane in the immediate vicinity. Now, all cells in the body can do penocytosis. For example, in the capillaries, uh, fluids can be transported from the bloodstream over to cells by penocytosis. So first it's brought in from the bloodstream and then exocytosis out the other side. So that's one example. Um, the liver brings in materials through penocytosis, but all cells can do this to some extent or another. The next one is a mouthful, receptor-mediated endocytosis, but it's not as hard as it sounds. Basically, it's endocytosis, and it looks a lot like penocytosis. The difference is there are receptors on the surface of the cell that make sure whatever is coming in is specific. Basically, those receptors say, hey, is that object out there that I want? And once that object binds to it, that triggers endocytosis. Let's take a look at that one. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is after specific objects. And so as those come and bind to receptors, then a signal is induced in the cell that causes this to form a pit. It's lined with a bunch of proteins, a detail I'm not going to get into, and that's all pinched off in a vesicle just like the others. Examples of receptor-mediated endocytosis would include white blood cells. They can bring certain materials in this way. And a lot of cells will bring in iron this way. The iron is bound to another protein, and that transferrin is brought in by receptor-mediated endocytosis. And so are some lipids. On low-density lipoproteins, lipids can be brought in this way as well. Hey, can plants do that too? You know, that's a good question. You wouldn't think that plants could do endocytosis of any kind, but actually they do. Uh, so it's only recently become apparent that plants do this. Now, since they have a cell wall outside of their membrane, they can't do phagocytosis. They can't reach out, but they can do these guys. And it's important in many of their processes, especially bringing nutrients into the roots. Here we can see all three versions side by side. Notice in each case, this membrane changes shape, a little bit different in phagocytosis than the other two. And in all three cases, you end up with those objects in a vesicle. Well, there's endocytosis. It's a safe way to bring large objects into a cell. Not only does it keep the integrity of the cell membrane intact, but it compartmentalizes whatever is brought in in this little vesicle so that the cell can still control what happens to the objects that it brings in. Well, that's it for this time. Until next time, keep appreciating life, even the little stuff.